Hello everyone, in this week's After Effects scripting tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to make a batch search and project script, which essentially can look through a whole list of project files you have, open them all up and look for any footage or other items you're not sure if you have in them or not. Sometimes you're working on a ton of different projects and over time you may lose some footage, but if you know the name of the footage or one of the compositions, you can search through all of your project files. So I have a practical example here where I have a ton of different After Effects projects and sometimes I need to figure out which one of these contains an old piece of footage as things have been changed. Uh, this is rather unfortunate, but scripting can come and help us. So what we're going to be able to do with this script is essentially give it a folder full of After Effects projects, as well as a piece of text or a string that we know might be with the name of the footage or some other element in the project. And this is going to open up all of the projects we give it or we can limit it just to search through a small number of them and look for any of this and reveal to you which project is located in so you don't have to manually open them all up. So in this case, if I go ahead and search for this specific shot name and I go ahead and just go ahead and load the first 15 projects, we're going to start loading all of it here. And after it's done importing all the projects, it's then gonna list through all of the elements and search for our text string. You can see here, after it's done importing our projects, we find the After Effects project which contains the footage that we're looking for, which in this case is uh, Wooded Trails 00863. And if we look at it, it's now located in this project. So we know we can open up this particular After Effects project and be on our way. Before we get started, I do wanna remind you guys down below, hit subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. And down in the description, you can check out the code for this uh, in the GitHub link. And down there as well, you can follow us on Instagram for updates. If you're not a member in our Discord group, come and join and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. And if you wanna help support the YouTube channel and get cool perks at the same time, you can become a YouTube channel member, supporter, premium supporter, or VIP. So the entire basic premise of this again is to take a whole bunch of project files, look for some data inside of it with a batch script, and easily basically find any piece of footage or something that we remember but don't have anymore on our computer. Sometimes I have a lot of missing footage that is gone for up to a year, but I know the footage name, so if I can find that, I can find the right project I need. So the way we're gonna go about this is that, like I said, we're gonna feed it a folder full of After Effects projects and a string with some information to look for in those projects, which will be imported just like this. The way we're gonna achieve that is simply choose all of or all the project files we want to import. And after we've done importing them, we're just gonna run through all of the items that are inside of After Effects at that point and compare them to see if they match the name we give it. If they do, we wanna then take that information and figure out what the name of the folder it's located in, which is the project name. So to get started, I'm gonna create a new JavaScript file and we're gonna start by creating a variable for our After Effects folder. So I'm just gonna say var aep folder is equal to a folder and we need to give it the path to where these folders are located. In my case, it's here on my E drive, and I'm just gonna paste the uh, path. And if you ever want to know if that's a valid uh, folder, if you did everything right, you can just say if the folder dot exists, and that should give you true or false depending on if it exists. In my case, I actually need to swap these slashes for the opposite kind, and now we should have true which is true, which means our folder is valid. Now let's just create the call to our main function. We'll just call it uh, find in projects, and we're going to require a folder to look through, our AEP folder, and whatever our string is. I'll just use whatever we used last time here. Um, we can just grab wooded trails and then the scene number. Uh, or the frames, and then we need to define this function called find in projects. We're gonna need our folder, or we could even just call it our main folder, and we're going to need our search string. And inside of here is where we're gonna do all of our processing. So you could basically put all your main code in here and easily just call find in projects with your folder and string and just do a whole bunch of searches. You could even loop this and do searches of multiple folders. So the first thing we're actually gonna do to make sure we don't get any pop-ups is use a suppress dialog uh, method. So I'm gonna say app.begin suppress dialogs. And then we're going to also create an app.end suppress dialogs. 
and we want to pass false as the argument for this. If we say true, this will display all of the potential pop-ups that would have appeared in here uh, afterward. If we say false, we're just gonna keep them suppressed. The reason we wanna do this is we're importing a ton of old projects, which could be in previous versions of After Effects. They could be missing fonts, missing footage, and these will bring up pop-ups that you usually need to click on to actually open the project. So this will prevent that from happening, and anything we put inside of here will prevent the pop-ups of any kind from coming up. Then I'm going to create an array for my After Effects projects, just call it AEPs. And I'm gonna to wanna to create a for loop and loop through all of the files within this folder. The way I'm gonna get those files, I'm just gonna say var temp files because we're not sure that they're all After Effects projects. So I'm just gonna call them my temp files, which is gonna be equal to our folder. And we're going to use the method called get files, which will retrieve all the files inside of our folder. In this case, if there's other things like folders or other types of file extensions, those are going to appear. So now we're going to loop through this whole list of files and filter out the ones uh, or just get the ones that are After Effects projects. The way we're gonna do this is by starting with var i is equal to zero. Our array of temp files starts at zero. And for i is less than our temp files dot length, increment i by one. And this is just how we can loop through an array simply. And what we're gonna do each time through, we're gonna check each file. The way we check the current file is by grabbing index i, or temp files, and we're gonna check if the name of that file uh, contains the string, which is index of, and we wanna check if it has .aep. If the name has an index of aep, and that is not equal to negative one, then that, no that means we have the string in there. Uh, basically, to put this simply, we're gonna take the name of our file, which let's just say in this case, we have 05 and 06 rotocate.aep. It's gonna take that whole name and it's gonna check to see if there's a valid index of this string. It's gonna basically check, does this name contain .aep? If it does, it's gonna give us a zero or positive integer indicating the location in the file where it is. So in this case, it's gonna be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. In position 19, we have the string .aep. So when we run this, this will return a 19. If it's in a different location, it will return a different index. But if it contains negative one, that means it does not exist in our string. So if it does not equal negative one, it's a positive integer or zero, and it exists, we thus have an After Effects project file. If we do, we wanna grab our AEPs and we're gonna push our temp files I. So this is how we're gonna filter for all of our After Effects projects. The next thing we're gonna do is take this entire array of AEPs and we're going to import them as standard files, which will bring them in inside of a folder with all of the After Effects project elements. So I'm going to create a variable called imported projects. And now we're going to loop through all of our AEPs. And we're just gonna use the same loop format for i is equal to zero, i is less than our After Effects projects dot length increment i by one. Now what we're gonna do is do the actual code to import the current file we're looking at, which is an After Effects file. And we're gonna say imported projects because we wanna store all of these dot push. We're gonna push it uh, to the end of the array. So what we're gonna push is actually a return object for the import function. When you import a file using the, the method for After Effects scripting, it returns or gives you back the actual item, in this case, one of these folders that it imported. And we're gonna push that as our imported project. So we're gonna have a whole array full of these folders here once we're done. We're going to push app.project.import file. And we're going to want to, inside of these parentheses, use a new import options object. And the new imports options essentially allows you to use different import settings. But in our case, we're just gonna give it a file. Luckily, we're looping through our files here. So the file I'm going to give it is our AEP's index I. So the current file it's gonna take and use that as our import object. And we're gonna import that file into the project. Now, in my case, I have a lot Actually, how many do I have? I have 82 project files here. I'm going to reduce this. So instead of taking all of our temp files, I'm going to reduce our count here to say 20. And then this is going to only import 20 projects into my file. 
uh, or into my project, but it's going to allow us to see them. So if I run this, you can see it's going to begin importing all of our files. And the more imports, the more RAM and memory it's going to start using. So it does start to slow down as you get more and more projects. So sometimes it may be worth to do this in increments. But if you have a powerful computer and some patience, uh, it can be worth it to wait for that as well. And one actual useful thing would be to add a write line uh, to check where we're at in the progress while it's not responsive. We can probably see uh, in the JavaScript console where we're at in terms of the importing. So now we're done. We've imported the first 20 elements it's found, and you can see they're just brought in as these folders. So essentially what we're gonna do after we've imported all of our items here, we're going to then search through the entire project panel here, and if we find anything that contains this text we give it, we know that it's contained in that project. So what I'm gonna first do is add a right line inside of uh, the After Effects project import part. And what I'm gonna do is just give myself a little bit of debugging information. And I'm going to say our After Effects projects dot length minus one. And that's gonna give us the number of projects left to import. And then after that, I'm going to add some text that says that many projects left to import. So now when I actually run this, what it's going to do is while it's not necessarily showing all the time what it's doing in the After Effects menu, it's going to hopefully show us what's going on in here. Um, but we use just the number of projects, which isn't changing. What we need to do is take the number of projects minus I, I believe, because uh, if we take the first one, so now let's try that again with aeps.length minus i instead of minus uh, one or whatever I did before. And now you can see we start at 20, 19, 18, 17, and now it'll give us a status update of how many projects we have left to import. This is again more useful for larger cases where you have more than like 15 to 20 projects. Um, and this will keep you informed whether or not it's running successfully. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is look for matches. So I'm gonna create a variable called found matches. This is gonna be an array. And now I'm gonna loop through all of the items in my After Effects project, which is very simple. We'll say var i is equal to one. And for i is less than or equal to our app.project, the number of items in that project, increment i by one. And now similar to previous where we use the index of our dot AEP to see if the name of our file itself was an After Effects project, we can use this index of to check for our uh, search string that we're bringing in. So I'm gonna say if our app.project.itemi, which means the current item we're taking a look at, if the name of that and the index of our search string does not equal negative one, which again means that it's positive or located somewhere in our string, if that's the case, then we have successfully found our search string inside of one of these projects. But we're going to store all of these search matches that we find first. So I'm gonna grab found matches dot push, and I'm going to push our current item by saying app dot project dot item I. Now we have a full list of all of the elements or items in here that we found that match the name we're looking for. Now we're going to loop through them one more time, and we're essentially going to jump up all the parent folders until we reach the project name, which is the root folder essentially. So we're gonna get a little bit fancy and do a do while loop. So we're going to say do, and inside of the brackets, we're going to do something. And at the end, we need to define how often we're gonna do it, which is while something is true or false essentially. So what, what are we gonna do? Well, first I wanna create a variable called this item, which is something we can just replace over and over as we basically hop up the folder structure to the root here. And what we're gonna do is actually do something for each found match. So we're gonna say for and surround our do while loop. We're gonna create a standard array loop here for i is equal to zero, i is less than our found matches dot length, increment i by one. Then we're gonna say this item is equal to found matches index i. So let's say we found this piece of uh, footage here that matched our name. That's gonna be our first item we're looking at. This item will be this piece of footage. And now what do we want to do? We want to jump up a folder until we can't anymore essentially. So do something 
while we're not looking at the root folder of After Effects. And what that means is if you say this item dot parent folder, this will check the parent folder. So the parent folder of this piece of footage here is actually the project folder here. And the parent of this project folder is root. And essentially what we can do with dot parent folder is make sure that it's not equal to the root folder. So we're gonna say if this item dot parent folder is not equal to app dot project dot root folder, then we wanna continue going up. Essentially, if we're looking at something and the root is not the After Effects project panel, then we wanna keep going up till we find this because this right here is our project folder and its parent folder is the root. So once it's at the root, we know this is the name we want to tell us what the project file of our searched term was found in. Hopefully that makes sense as we program this here. Now inside of our do, I'm going to have an if statement and I'm gonna check the same thing. If this, this item dot parent folder is not equal to our root folder, this item is going to be equal to this item dot parent folder. So this iteration, this first iteration through, if we're looking at this piece of footage, it's gonna say, is this parent's parent folder the root folder? No, it's not because this is not the root folder of our project. So this item is now gonna be equal to this folder here. And then it's gonna go back and check again. Is this new item, is its parent folder the root folder? In this case, yes it is. And if that's the case, that is the project name we want to display. So after our while, once we break out of that, we know that we've found something that is of an important project name. So I'm going to say this item dot name. And now I think we are safe to run this. Let's go ahead and clear out this project and hit F5. And we have an error there. We just need a parentheses and let's run it. You can see our live status updates of all of the projects left to import. And remember, it's going to import all of them first before we run through everything and look for our search string. And as we go along here, the second part of the script is much faster than the actual importation process uh, because it does have quite a bit of suppressing dialogues and pieces of footage and references to look for and import. But once we have reached the bottom here, you can see we're going to get two displays. Um, they're both the same name because it just repeated the name of the project, but that is where the string is located. If we go into 10 here, can see we have our search string name. And one more quick tip before we end this is you can change this first for loop here to populate it with less or more items. If you want to use all of them, just loop through temp files dot length. Just realize this may force the import to take a while if you're importing more than like 30 elements. But that's going to do it for this video guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, hit the thumbs up button and subscribe down below and also hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel. If you want to check out this code for yourself, check out the GitHub link in the description and down there as well you can follow us on Instagram for updates. Make sure you join the Discord server and get help with scripting, extensions, plugins, expressions, and much more. And you can help support us on YouTube as a member uh, with these different tier levels. You can be a member, supporter, premium supporter, or a VIP and get cool perks. Thanks again for watching everyone. We'll see you next time.